Okay, I've uh, got it all sanded down in 400 grit. And uh, I'm about to paint the black on the hood and the trunk for the stripes. And I'm going to be, I decided to paint right along the bottom here. When the body line down, it'll be black with a little stripe above it. So I'm going to paint all that black. Not anything on the front. Just the sides. I just wiped it down, ready to paint. Then after the black, I will uh, let it sit for pro uh, probably about a week. And then mask up the black stripes and paint it either silver or a pewter color, which I'll show you right here. This is the paint I try to use if I can find it been using it for oh 20 25 years it's a nason 2k urethane full thing and my local paint store had these two in the back room and i got them for 60 dollars a gallon one of them is a pewter metallic one silver i haven't opened them up yet i'll open them up before i'm ready to paint and make sure it's that color in the can I bought a can of red before, opened it up, and it was pewter. Uh, there's a the reducer. Here's the hardener. It's a great paint, and it'll last forever. It's a single-stage urethane, and it will uh, last forever. I'd rather paint with this than face clear any day. And here's the black right here. Uh, mixed up... Uh, about a quart to paint the stripes. I will be using this as a cheap uh, Harbor Freight paint gun, uh, 15, 20 bucks, something like that. Once it starts screwing up, I just throw it away. It ain't worth the hassle. Here's the boxes. I opened one up. I got another brand new one here in case I need it. They're just not worth messing with. So I think that's it. I'm about to get uh, ready to spray, put on my mask, and uh, get this black on there. Probably put about uh, probably three good coats, maybe two, two or three, depending on how it comes out. And uh, that's about it. Okay, I got uh, two coats of black paint on it. Let's take a look at it. It yeah, come out pretty good. A little bit of trash in it, but not too bad at all. Got the black along the bottom. Well, pretty good. A lot less trash than I thought for using old masking paper. I try to use it two or three times on, especially when I prime a car, I'll reuse some of that masking paper. But, uh, looks good. I'm gonna unmask it, let it sit outside for uh, a couple days in the sun, maybe a week. And come back and uh, mask off the stripes and paint it all either silver or charcoal. We'll go over the the paint, see what looks best. I'm still I still haven't decided whether it'll be silver or charcoal. Uh, so that'll be it for a while. It's all sanded down except for the roof it needs a final sanding with 400 grit. And then of course the black overspray uh, will be sanded down and then uh, the whole thing masked up and painted so that's it for now okay I've got her outside and just going over final sanding before I bring it back in 
the garage to get painted. I'll mask off the black stripes. And uh, I pretty much had it sanded before I painted the black, but I'm just going over the spot. What I use is a 400 wet and dry sandpaper. My bucket here. And then just, uh, I'm just going over this. The stripe will be in here somewhere. So I'm not going to sand to the very edge. I'm just going to go over the overspray. And just scuff it up real good. And I'd done the roof. I went over the roof of the block. Let me show you what I used here. It's block sander. Then you use the same wet and dry. 400. You can see 400 in there. And just go like this. I went over the whole car like this. You want a circular motion. Uh, this is the final coat of primer, so I didn't have any black on it. But on your first coat of primer, after you do the body work and you have the whole car ready to prime, you prime it and then use some uh, like spray black primer and coat it. Uh, so then when you sand like this, the high spots and the pinholes and the stuff like that will uh, show up. But I've already done that, and then this is the final coat of primer. So it really just needs to be sanded down. So I, I usually use a block on the flat surfaces. And then, uh, so that's pretty much done. Uh, now what I do to all my cars, which is the secret of a good paint job, is to always wash it because if there's a little bit of dust in any of these jams inside here, wherever, it's going to come out when you're painting. So what I do is uh, I'll bring it over. I got a power washer. You can just use a regular hose if you want and wash the whole car down. Soap and water and rinse it off real good and then uh, dry it off. Open up all the doors, hood, trunk wipe it all down with some towels so there's no drips or anything anywhere and then uh, and then prep your shop if you don't have a paint booth I'll be painting it right here and what I'll do is I'll water down the floor with the hose first off I would take the air hose and spray all the air outside and then wet down the floor and then I'll leave this door open here with this fan to blow out the overspray when I paint it. So I'll just be painting it right here. Paint jobs turn out pretty good. Uh, so after it's all washed and everything, I'll bring it in here and I'm gonna mask, use brand new paper and mask off all everything. And then uh, start on the stripes. I'm waiting on my quarter inch uh, masking stripes. Uh, and I will do all that on camera. I'll do my uh, how I do the stripes because this is uh, this is my own car that I'm keeping, and everything doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to have the factory, you know, whatever the factory dimensions are. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to do what I like, which will probably come like a couple inches from from the hood line here, and then measure it out to before this other body line here. I'll probably do that. I don't know, have a stripe on each side. And then I will measure from there to here and do the back. But your center point would be the, the hood here. So you measure off. But I'll do, I'll do all that. And I'll, I'll show you how I do that. And you just get the back trunk, same as the front. Whatever it measures, you got the center point right here. And then uh, go over and mask off them stripes. I'm going to look at some uh, 
I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it. I'm probably going to go down like this. Down a little bit. Same with the front. I will uh, it'll probably go over the header, I believe. I believe they come down here, here a little bit. So I'll save that to last, last uh, mask that off. And then, uh, and then I'll have to use some dry sandpaper on the edges after it's masked off, just to scuff down the little areas here, little area here, and then I'll be the the silver or charcoal, which on my next video I'll I'll open up them cans and uh, we'll check it out, stir it up real good, and see what looks better, the lighter silver or the pewter charcoal type color. And I'll be doing that here in the next few days, and uh, I'll have a video of uh, most of it. Okay, folks, I just got it all pressure washed, ready to uh, mask and paint it. I'm going to wipe it all down with some dry uh, cloths. Uh, should get no dirt dust whatsoever from this car floor may be another problem or the shop but I also wanted to show you the paint let's go this way here well I'll go here so you can see the color this is the uh, full thing silver metallic and this one over here is the pewter metallic so I opened them up they were the right colors like I said before, I, I ordered a can of red from another store before and it ended up being this pewter color. And I was pissed because I had the car all masked up, paint gun ready to go, and everything. And the thing wasn't red. So anyway, this is the silver. I don't know how good it will show up. We can let the sun a little bit. It's about 80 degrees out here. Perfect painting weather. Well, that'll be a, take me a few hours to mask it. So that's the silver. Now this is the, I call it the charcoal, but it's called pewter. And uh, you can see that. So, what color will you, would you paint it? Although, I won't see your comments because after, uh, you, you won't see this. You'll see the video after I paint it and everything, so the color will already be there. Uh, I'm still up in the air on it. I think it'll look, look great in the darker charcoal or the light silver. And I'm also trying to decide that whichever one I don't use, which car I will use it on. Uh, I got a couple of Novas. I'm going to paint an old Chevelle and an RT. Uh, none of them, none of them are planned to be silver or charcoal. But I'll leave it up to a surprise after it's painted. Let's see what it is. And like I said before, these are normally, oh, I don't know, there's some on eBay for like $199 a gallon just for the paint. No hardener, no reducer, or nothing. Uh, my local paint store, they had these in the back room, which they did, hadn't advertised or in their computer or nothing. It was just old stock that they stopped selling. And I got them for $60 a gallon. And I would suggest a good suggestion if you're not too particular on what color you want to paint your car is to go to your local paint store, uh, like uh, the ones in Dallas Fort Worth area, like English Color, uh, places like that, or uh, independent one. And a lot of times they mix up like a gallon of paint for somebody, and they either don't pick it up, don't pay for it or decide, no, nah, that's the wrong color, I don't want it. Or the paint guy screws up by mixing it a wrong color. Now they don't just throw that paint away. They put it in their back room or on a separate shelf and they'll sell it to you. 
already pre-mixed for uh, pretty cheap. So instead of paying, you know, this is this is a uh, uh, 2K urethane metallic. Back 20, 30 years ago, this stuff was about 40 bucks a gallon. Now it's 200. The prices have just gone through the roof. Now. Uh, Base, and base coat, clear coat, some of that stuff, I know it's upwards to $500 to $1,000 a gallon. It's just, it's just nuts. But you can get some of that type of paint too if you wanted to go base coat. You won't get the clear cheap because I don't have to mix that, but if they mix up a wrong color in a gallon of, clear, of uh, base coat and screw it up, they'll sell that. So check around where you live and uh, Go into them paint stores and get your paint for, you know, at least half. They'll sell it for at least half of what they normally sell it for. Or they'll give you a, a cheap, like mine was 60 so it was probably about a third of the price. So anyway, I'm going to decide. Uh, but I will be back with a video and show you how I will uh, mask off them stripes. And I just got my... Uh, My quarter inch 3M tape, which I suggest you always use a good man. You don't want this stuff peeling up halfway through your painting process. So all you always use a good 3M masking tape. Just like my masking tape here. My three quarter inch. It's 3M. Don't use any of that cheap stuff. Other stuff you can use cheap. Sanding paper. This stuff here I just got in. It, uh, I thought it said made in China. I thought it was made in China or something. But it's just some uh, DA sandpaper I'm going to use to sand down the red Corvette. So uh, I will be back with a video of it being masked up. I'm not sure uh, if I can record painting the car because. I don't want to get overspray on this camera. I just bought it. It's a couple hundred bucks. I don't know if I can set it up without it getting ruined with the with the spray paint, fumes, overspray, or whether I can uh, wrap it up in a plastic bag or cover it somehow and uh, and record it that way. I'm not sure right now. Probably won't video the paint process but maybe next time I will if I can figure out a way of not ruining the camera and I think that's what else did I want to go over okay we'll go over this car here real quick a lot of people will probably comment that I left uh, chrome you know the grill the windshield chrome and stuff on it well like I said earlier in another video, this whole car was taken apart. I was originally going to paint it black, but I paint stuff black anyway, whether it's underneath the car, the frame, underneath the hood. So I had all these moldings and stuff off. All these taillight bezels, bumpers, chrome, everything was stripped off this car. And I painted it all black underneath there. Of course, I had to repair some some uh, stuff underneath the the moldings so all that stuff was pulled off and and let me tell you these housings here are a pain in the ass to align and you have to take that off to take the bezel off to take the lens off and all that so I didn't want to uh, uh, leave all that stuff off I could have and the other thing uh, is it just takes up too much room you know some people paint with the doors and the fenders and the hood off and so I, I don't have that type of room these fenders and header and everything was all taken off repaired and painted all on the inside black to bolt it back together then bolt it on the car so everything underneath is all painted black so I I just pretty much put the car back together again I put the bumpers on it 
uh, like this black piece here, that's just going to stay black. So I don't need the bumper off of that. The rear bumper, the black, uh, is underneath that. So nothing. So that's one reason I left uh, all that stuff on there. Plus it'll take a lot less time to uh, put it back together. And a lot less chance of scratching stuff. You try to put this moldings and, and crap on, you're, you're pushing and next thing you know you got bare metal underneath here and it, it'll rust out. So it's all painted under there and there's silicone in there and these put back on and uh, it won't ever rust or nothing. And I'm a very good masker so I can mask that off and take a razor blade and you'll, you'll can't even tell that, uh, that this has been on there while it's painted. So, and like I said, it'll be less time putting the stuff back on. The other things, oh, I did forget to put, to uh, drill the holes for the Malibu. I can do that after it's painted. There's supposed to be some holes here for the Malibu. Uh, I do have brand new mirrors for it. And I left that deal on there. Uh, so I think that's it. I'll come back with a video of uh, me masking up the. I gotta wet wet this down and wipe it. Get all them water spots back off of it. And uh, I'll be back with masking the stripes off and in another video. Okay, I'm getting the uh, Chevelle masked up, and I'm just going to go over how you do racing stripes, in case anybody wants to know. Okay, first you find the center line, which is this right here, and I'll start up at the top here. So if you want to find the center up here, you just measure from the edge of the hood over to the other edge divide it in half, then run that line all the way down. Then you measure from here to here to your first, this is how wide you want the stripes. Uh, so I just went, uh, I forget how much it was now, about an inch or so to the first line. Then you run your first tape here, then do it evenly to your next one over here. Then how you And then how I did the back one is just a little bit past the body line here and run it all the way up here. But you you run again from your center line or to whichever edge here and make it even from there over to here. So you have the, and then, then repeat it on this side. So you have two the same and then you and then you run uh, two lines past it on each side. Two lines there, two lines there. Now this middle one you're not going to need, so you can just pull that off. But you put that on there. You put that line on there so you can match the other line up, uh, line up to it. Okay. Then after you do that, you just pull it off like that. You don't need that. You don't need your center line anymore. Peel that off. And then same with this middle line here. going to repeat this on the back trunk lid. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll mask from here to here with paper. So 
that's going to be black, then this black line that's exposed will be the color of the car. And then this line here will be black. And of course this will be the color of the car. So we got it all even measured out. Now what I'm going to do here off camera is I'm going to uh, going to curve. I looked at some uh, pictures and it's pretty much just straight, just an L shape here, crossed here. So I'm going to I'm going to run some tape here and do that, and then carry the stripe down here too. But anyway, that's how you get it. You just uh, use your tape measure here and just uh, just measure each thing and of course you can do it however you want now I'm not sure what the exact measurements are of a true SS but it's probably pretty close just from looking at pictures but I didn't get the exact dimensions because it's not it's not a show car it's just gonna be a driver so if it's you know an inch off or a half inch quarter inch off from factory I, you know I don't care I just gotta please myself and uh, this is my car it's not gonna be for sale failed to mention that on the other videos uh, all my other cars here none of them are for sale I'm keeping them all so don't anybody ask if, if it's for sale so all I got to do is please myself so it, the measurements don't have to be perfect up to factory code same with the paint job can have a little bit of trash in it uh, I don't sand and buff my own cars uh, well, I guess I'll just mention that now since I got this segment going uh, it's it's a waste of time and then it, it takes too much time to uh, uh, keep it up you'll know, have water spots in it and everything after you buff it and wax it and uh, and uh, and the uh, paint will last longer if you don't if you don't wax and buff it all the time and this paint here this 2k it, it'll look the same 10 years from now without being wax thing so that's why I don't do it. And plus, I don't care if there's any little trash imperfections. I'm not going to be sanding that down because that's just wearing off the paint too. Sand it down and buff it and make it a show car. It's just going to be a driver. But it's going to look, it's going to look good, as you'll see here in a little while. So I'll, uh, I'll come back right before I paint it because I still have to do the stripe along the bottom, along this bottom here. It's going to be black up to the body line, and then it'll have a black stripe right above it too, all the way across. So I have to, I'll have to mask that up. So I'll come back here after it's all masked and uh, show you right before I paint it. Okay, it's the next day, and it's now finally ready to paint. I had to stop last night. It was getting late. Uh, the bugs were coming out so as you can see now I got all the masks striped off you can kind of see how it's going to come out now where it's masked up with the paper that'll be black and then a little stripe on the side will be black so I was just going to give a quick video of it before I uh, paint it I am going to go with the uh, darker pewter charcoal color I was looking online as those for those stripes and uh, too many silver ones plus I could use the silver paint for something else uh, so that's it uh, as for prep most times you would want to uh, wipe this down with uh, wax and grease remover with a clean cloth but I'm not going to on this mainly because uh, my hands aren't greasy and uh, I have there's no silicone or wax or anything floating around in the shop so there's I'm not going to get no fish eyes or contamination in it plus I washed it with soap and water there yesterday nothing's been on it since but normally you would if you're gonna do your car uh, wipe it down with wax and grease remover and then use a tack cloth which I'm gonna go over here 
over this real quick with a uh, final wipe down before I paint it. And I will put a minimum of three coats on from that color, mainly because it's metallic, so it's not, uh, not solid. Metallic's a little bit tricky to paint sometimes. Uh, you'll get what is called tiger striping. So you have to fog, fog in the paint there in different directions sometimes, get the metallic even. So at least three coats, and that'll be good enough for a, a, a single stage urethane. Now, as you can see, my shop isn't that clean. If you were to do it in your garage, go ahead and clean it out. If you're not as lazy as I am, you can move all this stuff over. But for me, I got enough room. But see, all this stuff does collect dust. I know, but uh, like I said, I blew it out yesterday, and there shouldn't be that much stuff floating around. But if it's your garage and you want to paint a car in your garage, just go ahead and uh, clean as much stuff as you can. Blow out all the uh, dust that's settling on shelves and everything, and then then water down the floor. So I guess that's the final segment here before I paint it next segment I will uh, I'll come in here after it after I painted it and it's uh, after a couple hours I'll come in here and just give her a little quick uh, video of it uh, I probably won't unmask it the stripes and everything until uh, tomorrow until it's really dry don't want to take a chance of any uh, dirt uh, falling on from the paper falling on the wet paint so I'm going to put paint it let it sit for a couple hours and I'll come in and give a, a quick little video of it and then probably a video tomorrow or next day after it's all dry and everything's unmasked and I'll go over what I'm putting on it I got a bunch of new little uh, new emblems like here and uh, new mirrors got to clean up the door handles put them on I got a new lock set put on it I should have drilled the holes for the Malibu but I'll have to drill some holes here put the Malibu emblem on there trunk lock a uh, bunch of little stuff and get it all ready and it'll be all done so that's it for now Okay, folks, I just finished painting it about an hour or so ago. I'm going to let it dry overnight before I unmasked it. But uh turned out pretty good. Minimal orange peel. I did have a problem with this tape here flopping up a little bit. I'm going to take a little compound of that but other than that it should come up pretty good nice and shiny I'm probably just gonna leave it like that I'm not gonna even bother sanding or buffing it uh, if it was your car and you wanted to make it a show car or whatever you could but I'm not gonna bother it looks good enough to me it'll last a long time right there there he goes another little bug they landed in it after it was painted so but anyway that's what it is I will take another video after I unmask it tomorrow the next day pull it outside and start putting all the stuff back together. That's it for now.